There's a lot of gas under the Congo. Scientists have recently discovered the world's largest tropical peatland, which spans between the two Congos. The newly discovered Cuvette Central peatland lies in the central Congo Basin, covering 145,500 square kilometers, which is an area larger than England. The peatland locks in 30 billion tons of carbon, which is the equivalent of three years of the world's total fossil fuel emissions. Peat is an organic wetland soil formed by dead plant debris. Peatlands act as carbon sinks by removing carbon from the atmosphere through plant growth. If peatlands dry out, for example through drainage for agriculture, it could trigger further decomposition of the peat, thus releasing carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Scientists say the Cuvette Central peatland must be well protected in order to prevent major damage to the environment. Here are some more stories on climate change. Thought climate change predictions were scary. Well, they just got a whole lot scarier. The possible effects of climate change are far worse and could come far sooner than we previously thought. So says James Hansen, a leading climate change researcher who was among the first to warn the public about the serious effects of a buildup of carbon dioxide. The former director of NASA's Institute for Space Studies, along with 18 other leading climate scientists, published a paper this week predicting rapid sea level rises could happen within decades. The team of researchers' primary claim that as the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica melt, a layer of cold fresh water will build up over the ocean, trapping warmer, salty ocean water, with which it doesn't easily mix, underneath the surface, and thereby leading to a feedback loop that causes ice shelves to melt even more rapidly effectively slowing down and possibly shutting down ocean circulation. An idea apparently not too dissimilar from the premise of the 2004 disaster movie, The Day After Tomorrow. The scientists believe that this ice melting will cool polar regions of the globe and warm areas around the equator, causing stark temperature variances that could make superstorms, such as Hurricane Sandy, which struck the U.S. East Coast with devastating effect in 2012, far more frequent. To argue their case, the researchers controversially claim that storms during the warm Eemian period 120,000 years ago were powerful enough to lift massive boulders, 1,000 tons in size, from the bottom of the ocean and hurl them ashore. Hansen and his team believe a multimeter sea level rise could occur before the end of the century and envelop all of the planet's coastal cities. Despite the dire predictions, Hansen, in an accompanying video, explained that there may possibly still be an opportunity to reverse this worrying trend, saying, quote, I doubt that we have passed the point of no return, but frankly, we're not certain of that. Middle East and North Africa soon to become uninhabitable. A group of researchers believes temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will rise dramatically over the course of the 21st century. The research suggests even if Earth's average temperature increases by 2 degrees Celsius, summer temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will increase more than twice that. The temperature could rise to 46 degrees Celsius during daytime by mid-century, and it could be as high as 50 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Also, heat waves could occur 10 times more often than now. The hottest period lasted for about 16 days on average between 1986 and 2005. However, these areas will experience 80 days of extreme heat per year by mid-century, and up to 118 days by the end of the century. The increasing air pollution caused by desert dust storms could make the environmental conditions intolerable, forcing people to migrate. Climate change has already caused islands to vanish. A new study led by University of Queensland researchers say that changes in global climate and the subsequent sea level rise has already led to the loss of multiple Pacific islands. A team of Australian scientists say that Isabel, one of the main islands of the Solomon Archipelago, has already lost five of its reef islands. Another six islands on Isabel have declined in area by more than 20% between 1947 and 2014. Meanwhile, residents of the island of Nuatambu have been forced to relocate to the nearby main island of Choiseul because of flooding. Of the dozens of homes that once stood on Nuatambu, at least 11 have already been swept away by the rising waters. 
While the global average rate of sea level rise has been 3.2 millimeters per year since 1993, the Solomon Islands have experienced an average rise by about 7 to 10 millimeters per year since 1994. The research team, who published their study in the journal Environmental Research Letters on Friday, discovered that the sea level rise has destroyed villages that have existed since the 1930s and has displaced numerous communities. The earth has gotten greener while it's been getting hotter. A new study published in the journal Nature Climate Change argues that the huge uptick in atmospheric CO2 since the Industrial Revolution has driven a huge growth in plants. As global atmospheric CO2 concentrations continue to rise, scientists say plants are using the extra CO2 to fertilize their growth. American satellites have detected a greening of up to 50% of the Earth's vegetated land over the past 33 years. Only 4% of the vegetated land has suffered losses. The new study states that of the extra leaves that grew as a result of rising CO2 levels were laid out like a carpet, the leaves would cover the entirety of two continental USAs. However, the team of researchers argues that at some point the plants will acclimatize the rising CO2 concentrations. Then it will have no effect on them. Future plant growth is also limited by factors like access to water and nutrients, which will likely be impacted by climate change. The study was published by an international team of 32 authors led by Chinese and American researchers. Climate skeptics jump on research like this as proof that rising CO2 concentrations isn't so bad, but this ignores the negative aspects of climate change, such as rising sea levels, ocean acidification, and more severe tropical storms.